So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Barbara Sanders. I'm the CTO of Vectory and uh, honored to stand here today and talk about our efforts at Vectory to develop our precision targeted therapies for neurodegenerative diseases. So, this is an overview of our management team and together we collectively have almost a century of experience in large pharma, small and medium biotech, and especially in the development of pharmaceutical uh, products. And most notably, my co-founders, Sander van Deventer and Pavlina Konstantinova, have stood at the cradle of two approved gene therapies today, namely Glybera and uh, Hemgenix, but apart from that, many different INDs in the gene therapy field. So we believe with this collective experience that we will be able to deliver on our mission to develop these AV-based gene therapies for neuro neurodegenerative diseases. So what are the diseases that we are targeting? Um, we're not taking it easy. We're going into the CNS to these devastating diseases in, in the, uh, the neurodegenerative disease space. Diseases like ALS, Huntington's, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's don't need an introduction. And they are hallmarked by an intracellular toxic proteinopathy. And this is what we aim to target with our gene therapy concept, our vectorized antibodies. These diseases are challenging because the CNS is a hard area to reach from a delivery perspective. We have an intracellular toxic target, and it's not only one type of target. The aggregates have multiple forms, multiple monomers, and there's a complex pathology. Apart from that, these proteins also have a native form, which need to remain intact to preserve the neuronal function. And lastly, something that was deemed impossible before, these intracellular toxic aggregates need to be cleared from the cells to regain the neuronal function. And this is what we try to do with our gene therapy vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about our first two programs in ALS and Huntington, and I'm going to finish off with our technologies that we developed to enable these programs. So starting with our VTX2 program, this is for patients with sporadic ALS, and um, as compared to familiar, familiar ALS, which is only about 5% of the ALS patients, 97% of the ALS patients have TDP43 aggregates or TDP43 pathologies. So we find this a very attractive target for this patient population. We have our own AV 5.2 vector, which expresses our vectorized antibodies, or in this case, a single chain variable fragment, which is a fragment of an antibody, the binding area. We also work with nanobodies and different antibody formats, but for this program, it's a single chain variable fragment. Our antibody discovery group takes a lot of care in developing these antibodies so that they specifically bind the toxic aggregates in the cell, leaving the wild type native forms intact. And in addition to that, these VECTABs, what we call them, vectorized antibodies, are also screened for their capacity to degrade these toxic aggregates. So as you can see, the vector will transduce, in this case, an ALS motor neuron, and then bind the, the DNA cassette expresses the VECTAB, and this then binds to the toxic TDP43 aggregates. Here we have a data of a panel of our VECTABs. We have 26 different VECTABs, so vectorized antibodies, that we designed that bind TDP43. And in the graph, you will see that this whole panel of VECTABs versus a control VECTAB, which does not bind TDP43, have a different capacity for clearing aggregates from an in vitro cell system. And this is seen in the, the panel with all the pictures that cells with aggregates with these dots are the control VECTAB, and that where we have a VECTAB that is specific for TDP43, these aggregates or these dots are effectively cleared. This is shown in NUTOS cells, but we also have actually a whole data set with uh, ALS-derived motor neurons, also even in healthy motor neurons that have been stressed, and we really see that um, different VECTABs are capable of doing this to a different extent. And I also want you to take, I don't know if I have a 
laser, don't think so, but the VEC tab next to the control on the left, this one does not, it actually increases aggregation and later I have some data where we introduce our technology that we can improve the degradation capacity of a VEC tab that cannot degrade an aggregate. So here's a schematic on how we think our VECTAB works. In the healthy situation, we have TDP43 in the nucleus. It does shuttle back and forth to the cytosol, and it controls splicing. In the ALS situation, TDP43 is mislocalized outside of the nucleus. TDP43 aggregates, and this causes a gain of toxicity. When we treat the cells with our VECTABs, the VECTABs clear these aggregates. They restore the nuclear TDP43 and the function, and so restore the functionality of these neurons. We also have this functionality data in our iPSC neurons where we really see um, neuroid growth and um, neuroid uh, excitology bursts that are comparable to wild type. At this moment in time, we are running our first in vivo proof of concept model with this VECTAB, and we hope, uh, if all looks good, to continue towards the clinic in Q1 2025. Our second program is our Huntington program called VTX3, where we target specifically the mutant Huntington program in Huntington's disease. The concept is the same that we have our own proprietary capsid, AV5.2, and I'll tell you a bit more about our capsids later in the technology section. Here we have uh, the DNA cassette expressing a single chain variable fragment or a nanobody against the mutant Huntington while leaving the wild type Huntington intact. With Huntington, there is also a toxic monomeric form of the mutant protein, which we also target with our VEC tabs. And in this case, we really try to shuttle the monomeric form towards the proteasome but we are also capable of shuttling the bigger aggregates towards the autophagy degradation pathways. Here we show a smaller panel of nine VEC tabs, but the same concept that we are really able to reduce the toxic aggregates of the mutants Huntington in this cell system. And you can see in the control panel on the top all of the pink mutant aggregates whilst in the bottom, these mutant aggregates are completely cleared, and then there's uh, only a few cells that are not transduced where you can still see the aggregates. So it's like a negative control in your, in your sample. Here too, we are uh, just about completed our R62 mouse model, and I can tell you at least verbally that uh, we really see amazing clearance of aggregates in these, in these mice. So the histology is absolutely amazing compared to um, the non-treated animals. So we are confident that this concept can work and also here we'll be moving towards more preclinical proof of concept and towards the clinic in 2025. This is another schematic on how we see the concept working. It's quite similar where we have a mutant protein in the Huntington disease carriers and this mutant protein is either in the nucleus but also in the cytosol where it can form uh, soluble toxic Huntington oligomers, but also these Huntington aggregates. And we really select our VEC tabs on the specificity for the mutant form, so it's really a conformational epitope versus the wild type, which you need to keep in contact for neuronal functioning. So now changing gears to our enabling technologies. We have four technology pillars, and I already explained a bit about the VECTAB. So this is our antibody group that is really specialized in um, designing the binding parts of our VECTABs, and also making sure that it's binding the right epitope and that it's selective for the, 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 the targeted species that we want to degrade. I also showed you that some VECTABs do not degrade. So they bind very well, but they don't degrade our toxic protein. And this is where the Vectron technology comes in. And I have a slide after this that shows you how to enhance degradation capacity of an antibody. The antibodies need to be vectorized, and that's where the VCAP platform comes from. The VCAPs are our capsid 
and I already showed you our AV2 5.2 concept, which I'll tell you about. But on top of that, we also have a capsid development platform based on rational design where we enhance the tropism or the cell specificity of our capsids. And Manuvec is our collection of technologies that represents our uh, production um, platform. We really uh, see manufacturability as a key component of the whole uh, gene therapy pipeline. Are we able to produce enough material at acceptable COGS for such large disease indications? So this is already means that even though we're an early startup, we're thinking of the commercial scale already now. What do we need to do to ensure we have enough yields, that we have enough percentage full, and that we can really get to a stable and robust production? First, back to Vectron. So what we have uh, done with our scientists is looked at how to enhance the degradation capacity of our intercellular antibodies. So we have three flavors. Um, we call them Degron tags, which are attached to the binder or to the single chain variable fragment or to a nanobody or even a full length antibody. And these Degron tags are kind of like a, um, a postal code or, or, or localizer for the uh, antibody and the Degron complex to shuttle the target to a specific degradation pathway within the cell. So the top one is a UPS Degron or for the proteasomal degradation pathway. Once the VECTAB binds the target, the toxic target, ubiquitillation is set in place and the target is degraded by the proteasome. Another degradation pathway is the chaperone-mediated autophagy or lysosomal degradation. Here the degron shuttles via chaperone the target and the VECTAB towards the lysosome for degradation. And for autophagy, we have special markers that that shuttle the complex, and this is usually the bigger aggregates, towards the autophagosome for degradation. So we've tested a panel of our different Vectrons. Now remember I showed you a control antibody that did not degrade. What we've done here is taken that Vectab, which is here the gray bar, and we've attached 21 different Vectrons individually. So each line you see is the same Vectab with a different Degron. So you can see here that the vectrons, which come from different degradation pathways, all can, uh, to some extent, increase the degradation capacity of the same binder. And especially the autophagy degrons seem to be most effective in doing this. So this is really quite interesting. We really don't think anyone else is doing this in the antibody field, and especially not for intracellular clearance of uh, intracellular toxic aggregates. So this is, of course, applicable to a whole scala of different proteinopathies. And now a few words on our capsids. We have selected our AV5.2 capsid based on a number of important characteristics like its immune profile, its safety, potency, and especially manufacturability. We really invest in manufacturability, like I said before, to be able to produce enough vector at high yields for these large disease indications. And this is our Vectory AV5.2 capsid. At the bottom, you can see how we've designed it for manufacturability and the yields we are attaining. So really high percentage full, more than 50% at the start of USP, and yields of up more than 1E12 VG per mil at crude, crude harvest. We're using this base vector for rational design. Um, and here we are uh, with protein databases and co-crystal structures. We are structurally designing capsids that bind a specific human membrane protein. We have selection in human iPSC-derived cells to really make sure we are able to still transduce these cells, and then we go to larger animals to show the vivo biodistribution. So far, we are getting capsids that are significantly better in transducing cells, so we see higher transgene expression and also a larger spread, so a higher percentage of transduced cells, also at lower MOIs. 
and this is just one slide of our manufacturing uh, platform. We have really optimized from starting materials to equipment so that we are scalable and we are envisioning at least a 2,000 liter scale production. And at this moment, we are running routinely a 50 liter production in house. And that brings me to my last slide summarizing what we do at Vectory. I hope I've convinced you of our innovative uh, programs and the technologies that we develop to enable these. And, uh, with that, I would like to end and happy to take your questions. Thank you.